Hey everybody, Dr. Josh Axe here. So excited today to talk about how to heal your hormones. And I'm gonna be covering everything from how to overcome hypothyroidism. We'll be talking about things like PCOS, infertility, postmenopausal, things like hot flashes, and also other hormone imbalance conditions I'll be covering today. And I'm gonna cover a lot of topics. A lot of it is on here, some of it is not on here, and I have a few bonus things here I wanna talk about at the end. In fact, number seven is probably one of the biggest things you wanna do, so you wanna stay till the end. All right, so I'm gonna talk about things diet. Now, one diet's keto. I am gonna talk about some non-keto diet things, though, when it comes to hormones. Also, covering what to remove. I'm gonna talk about some of the best foods. Also, I broke it down into specific herbs and supplements for females specific herbs and supplements for males, essential oils, and other oils that aren't just essential oils, and supplements, and a lot more. So anyways, I wanna say I'm so excited to be here talking to you about how to heal your hormones. Before I jump into hormonal health though, take a minute right now and let me know the city you're from, the state you're from, the country you're from. I wanna give you a shout out right now here on Facebook Live. Feel free to ask any questions. And um, also, do me a favor, there are millions of people that are struggling with hormone imbalance and they don't know their natural ways. In fact, did you know that people today for hormone imbalance are being prescribed antidepressant and anti-anxiety medications rather than teaching people how to use nutrition? So do me a favor, take a minute right now, punch that share button, click the love button, help me spread the word that food should be medicine, not synthetic chemicals. So thanks everybody who's jumping on here right now and supporting this broadcast. All right, so we got a lot we're gonna cover today. Uh, we'll see who's joining me. All right, looks like we got people all over the world right now. I wanna say hi to Carissa McCullough from Minnesota. That's where my wife is from. So Carissa, thanks for jumping on here today. We've got uh, Tamar um, Foote, who is from Halifax, Canada. Hey Tamar, thanks for joining me here today. Chris Beltron from Toledo, Ohio. Hey Chris, thanks for joining me here today. We got Deanna Duncan from Tulsa, Oklahoma. We got Lenore from uh, Toronto. We've got N Nicola Croft, who's from Nottingham in the UK over in England. Hey, thanks for joining us here today. Uh, all right, lots of our uh, Canadians on today. We've got Donna on, Linda on from Ontario there as well. Susanna's on from South Africa. Chris Sheena from Chattanooga, Tennessee. I'm in Nashville right now. And uh, we've got Kierse, I wanna say that right, from Lachar, Scotland. Sorry if I said your name wrong, but thank you so much for joining me from Scotland. All right, people from all over the world, I love this. All right, so we're gonna be talking about how to heal your hormones uh, today. And again, thanks for everybody who's sharing this video as well. So let's go ahead and dive in and start talking about how to heal your hormones the number one thing you gotta realize about hormones is that a lot of them are essentially, I don't know how to say this, but steroids. That's what hormones are made up of, which means they're more like fat than they are carbohydrates and other nutrients. So there's a lot of fat components and some amino components when it comes to our hormones. So in order to support our hormones, you know what you need? Fats, you need healthy fats in your diet. Did you know that there are no essential carbohydrates? There are essential amino acids, there are essential fatty acids, but there aren't essential carbohydrates. And so if you're gonna have hormones balanced, you've gotta have lots of healthy fats in your diet and some of the right types of amino acids. And that's why I think for a lot of people, if you wanna balance your hormones, especially a hormone called insulin, Doing a keto diet for about 30 to 90 days can be a great solution. Now, I don't think a keto diet is meant to be for most people a long-term diet done more than a year. Now, there are civilizations like Eskimos who lived off of essentially whale blubber and wild caught fish and, and a few other things who followed keto who have lived to be over 100. So that's possible. But I think for a lot of people, I would think of the keto diet like I would a long-term fast. In fact, did you know that fasting and keto are the only two ways to really get your body into a state of ketosis where you're burning fat for energy? Now, one other important part of hormones being balanced is having lower body fat. Now, not too low, but a balanced body fat. If your body fat gets way too low, as can happen with some, especially females that get more into bodybuilding or, uh, or that are professional athletes, 
Sometimes that can get too low, but with 98% of people, there's too much body fat. And did you know that excess body fat acts as an organ in your body that actually causes your body to secrete imbalance of hormones like leptin and ghrelin, which is your hunger hormone, which tells your body you've got to keep eating. So you want to keep your hormones balanced for that reason. So again, step number one in balancing your hormones is getting more of the right type of fats in your diet and considering doing keto for 30 to 90 days and then just getting on a diet where you get rid of the sugar and refined grains and carbs. You are consuming some carbs like fruits like berries, you're getting beets and carrots and pumpkin and squash, like more of those nutrient dense, uh, more of those nutrient dense, um, you know, carbohydrate sources, even some rice and quinoa and oats, sweet potatoes, getting some of those in your diet afterwards, but not going overboard on the wheat products, the refined grains. Here are some of the fats you want to consume as you go keto. So let's dive in here. Number one, you need omega-3 fatty acids. Now, Omega-3 fats are anti-inflammatory, right? So they're the most anti-inflammatory of the fats. So you wanna make sure you're getting omega-3s. Now your best source of omega-3 fats by far is gonna be wild caught fish to start, okay? Wild caught fish. Here are the five fish that are highest in healthy fats. Salmon, mackerel, tuna, halibut, and sardines. Now there are others that have healthy fat, but those are five that most of us have access to on a regular basis, especially salmon and tuna. Now listen, when buying salmon, I think you know this, but make sure it's always wild caught, ideally sockeye or king salmon from Alaska or Northern Pacific areas. Those are the lowest in mercury, the highest in omega-3s, and the highest in an antioxidant called astaxanthin, which is a fat soluble antioxidant, which actually helps with longevity, eye health, and a lot more. But Again, omega-3 fats, that's one of the first type of fats you wanna get in your diet to help balance hormones and specifically reduce inflammation in the body. That is key, okay? So fats, omega-3s. The second type of fat you wanna be getting are you wanna be getting healthy, and by the way, other sources of omega-3s are walnuts, chia seeds, flax seeds, hemp seeds, now I will say, they're a type of omega-3 fat that is harder to convert into the most anti-inflammatory fats, like EPA, but you still wanna get some of those in your diet, okay? So omega-3 fats. Next is healthy saturated fats from things like coconut, animal products, and full fat dairy like ghee and grass fed butter. Now coconut contains MCTs, that's medium chain triglycerides. It's probably the easiest type of fat for your body to burn as fuel and for energy. So you wanna make sure MCT, you can take MCT oil. Now when buying MCT oil, look for MCT oil that's certified organic and that contains herbs like turmeric and black seed oil. Black seed oil and turmeric are two powerful herbs that are bitter and warming that actually also help with reducing inflammation, fighting disease, anti-cancer properties, all kinds of stuff. But again, look for an MCT oil. When you're buying MCT oil, certified organic, and look for ones that have turmeric and or black seed oil when you're buying your MCT oil. And MCT is great for adding to coffee, great to add to a smoothie. I recommend a tablespoon one to two times daily. All right, let's talk about animal fats. Now, did you know that animal fats, if we're talking about chicken fat like schmaltz or tallow from beef fat or duck fat, things you might cook with, those are high in certain types of uh, saturated fats like stearic acid that actually make, that are the most similar to what makes up our own bodies. And those can be very good fats to use there as well. So again, animal fats can be great for you. Here's the thing though, if they come from healthy animals, right? Remember, you are what you eat, what they ate. So if a cow is eating grains, their tissues are full of more omega-6 fats and certain types of fats that cause inflammation. If you're buying an animal oil or fat, an animal fat that is from a grass-fed, pasture-raised, cared for properly, it's gonna be higher in omega-3 fats and other fats that reduce inflammation. So that's key. If you are gonna use animal fats as part of your diet, make sure that they are organic and grass-fed. All right, omega-9 fats, those are known as monounsaturated fats. 
Those are found in things like avocados, all types of nuts and seeds, and even olives and olive oil. And so getting some of those omega-9 fats is great for hormonal health. And then a type of omega-6 fat called GLA, that's gamma linoleic acid, that's found in evening primrose oil or borage oil. But those are actually great for supporting progesterone levels in both women and in men. So evening primrose oil and borage oil, some great oils if you're strained with progesterone, that's a good oil to do with some of that GLA, okay? So again, as we're talking about this, some of the healthy fats you should be consuming, omega-3s, MCTs, uh, getting monounsaturated fats from avocado and olives and nuts and seeds, and then also GLA. Now here's the other, a couple other things you need to be doing in terms of diet to balance your hormones, especially when we're talking about a keto diet. You need collagen. Okay, here's the thing that might surprise you. By the way, I wanna say thanks for everybody who's watching this live broadcast now. Hey, do me a favor, millions of people don't know the truth about how they should be eating for their hormonal health. So hey, press the share button, help me share this. Thanks everybody right now who's on mission. All right, collagen. Collagen contains an amino acid called glycine. Glycine has been shown in clinical studies to increase your lifespan and support your liver and detoxification of xeno and phytoestrogens, which throw your estrogen and progesterone off. So if you heard about like eating out of plastic bottles or, or the Teflon pans and those things, that those actually cause, uh, they're, they, they're, they're estrogen mimickers. Well, your liver detoxifies those estrogens and glycine, which is found in bone broth and collagen, actually supports liver detoxification. So the most important type of protein to be getting when you're on a keto diet or trying to balance your hormones is going to be collagen rich proteins, which you're gonna get from consuming bone broth or bone broth protein or multi-collagen powder, but that's what you want. So you wanna get more collagen. Now, the other thing is you want fiber rich vegetables. This is big. There are people out there on a keto diet that are consuming bacon and butter that are conventional, not even organic, almost every meal, okay? If you're gonna do the keto diet the right way, you've gotta be doing lots of vegetables along with these real healing, healthy fats. So vegetables, especially broccoli, cauliflower, asparagus, cabbage, um, you know, getting those vegetables that are green, spinach, chard, green and nutrient dense, that's what you should be loading up on if you're gonna do the keto diet the right way. So these three big things you should be getting in the keto diet, healthy fats, collagen, and loads and loads of fiber-rich vegetables. If you're gonna consume fruit, make sure they're berries, especially raspberries, blackberries, and blueberries are the best when you're going keto. All right, now I'm gonna talk about the foods that are wrecking your hormones, along with essential oils, female-specific herbs, and I'm gonna to touch on the best things for thyroid health, for PCOS, for fertility, for hot flashes. I'm gonna to touch on all those categories, before I do that, I want to say thanks to everybody right now. I see so many of you guys hitting the love button. I want to say thanks so much to Helena, Lynn, Nancy, Shannon, everybody. Thank you so much for being on mission with me right now. I also do want to mention here really quickly that um, if you want everything I'm covering today in depth on how to balance your hormones naturally, I'm coming out with a new book. My new book comes out in six days, okay? Just six days it's being released. And right now, just so you know, it's $10 off on Amazon. And you can pre-order it also on Barnes & Noble. It's typically $30, but it's just $18 right now. It's a hardback book. This is my new book, Keto Diet. Okay, you guys are seeing it first here. It comes out in just a few days. If they ship it to you, it should be to you by probably Tuesday or Wednesday next week. It has 80 plus recipes. And this is a 30 day meal plan, supplement guide, has multiple keto plans. So there's actually a keto cancer plan in this book, keto hormone plan, keto collagen, keto vegan plan, keto cycling. And it also has recipes like keto pancakes, keto fudge, keto brownies, keto blueberry muffins, using healthy things like almond flour, coconut flour, pastured eggs. So again, make sure to get it now. The price will probably jump in the future. So you can buy it right now, $10 off on amazon.com and get it pre-ordered. But new book just, just coming out here in just a few days, right there. All right, so let's talk about what to remove from your diet to naturally balance your hormones right now. And by the way, if you're gonna search on Amazon, just search keto diet Dr. Axe. 
and it'll come right up there on Amazon or my team will leave a link there that you can click through. So here are the hormone destroyers. First one, guess what? Milk, conventional dairy products. Here's the problem with milk, and this is gonna blow your mind. Milk, here for starters, most people that buy and consume milk, it starts off as being conventional milk. Now, conventional milk ha comes from cows that have been fed GMO, genetically modified grains, and have been injected with steroids grown with hormones and antibiotics, and hormones like RGBH, which actually, uh, actually kills the cow long-term and actually cuts their lifespan in half with consuming a lot of these things. So the thing to remember is, if you're consuming conventional milk, in fact, a study out of Spain found that your average glass of milk has 21 different chemicals and medications in it. It's crazy, right? Not only that though, milk today, aside from all the chemicals, even if it's organic, most of it has been pasteurized and homogenized. Now, what is homogenization? Homogenization is breaking up the fats. It actually damages the fats. So when you're drinking homogenized milk and dairy, it actually is, you're drinking bad fats. A lot of times, even if it's organic. Now listen, if you're buying milk from your local farmer's market, that, and it's raw and organic, that's, 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 that's another thing. But here's the other thing, milk is very high in lactose, which actually can get you out of ketosis, and it's a carbohydrate. So if you're gonna consume dairy, buy raw organic cheese or raw sheep cheese from a place like Whole Foods Market or Sprouts or your local health food store. So buy raw cheeses, grass-fed butter, ghee. So there are some healthy sources of dairy, like fermented dairy, like organic, uh, you know, some organic kefirs and yogurts from your local farmer's market. Raw cheese, especially raw sheep cheese, is actually even higher in fat than cow's milk. So you can consume some of that, but most milk today is very toxic to your body because it's full of chemicals, steroids, medications, and hormones. It's full of omega-6 fats because the cows weren't fed grass. It's full of genetically modified residue. It's been pasteurized so all the enzymes are dead and it's been homogenized so all the fats are bad. You guys get what I'm saying here? Don't drink conventional milk. Instead, opt for grass-fed butter, raw cheeses, and some kefir that's organic, those are all gonna be better options. All right, so stay away from milk. Other foods you wanna remove if you wanna keep your hormones balanced is sugar. Really sugar of all types. Now if you're doing a little bit of raw local honey, that's fine, a little bit of raw local honey, dates, small amount, but sugar in general, you wanna be very careful that even cane sugar, which is more natural, sugar will throw your hormones very far off. The other thing is refined grains, okay? Wheat bread, white bread. So wheat products are not healthy, everybody. I'm, I'm here to tell you. Now, unless you're in Europe, in Italy, and you're in Tuscany, and they're growing their own einkorn wheat, the original wheat, that's fine for some people in small amounts. But for a lot of people, 95% of products today aren't that. So you wanna stay away from wheat and white products and refined grains because they call an in insulin spike in your body when insulin gets off, remember that hormone, insulin, when we hear insulin, we always think of diabetes. Insulin isn't just about diabetes. Hormone conditions like hypothyroidism, polycystic ovary syndrome, which is PCOS, infertility, those issues have all been connected to insulin imbalance, where you're getting those blood sugar spikes. So the key is to keep blood sugar balanced is what? Consuming fat, I put that up there, right? Fat protein in the form of collagen or any type of protein and fiber, fat, protein, and fiber during your meals and keeping the carbs out. That's how you keep insulin balanced. And also there's herbs I'm gonna talk about that help with insulin and these different hormone balances as well. But that's the key. So sugar is gonna throw that off. Grains are gonna throw that off. Hydrogenated oils. Here are the, here are the big oils you wanna stay away from. Canola, cottonseed, and corn oil, the three C's. And you also need to be careful with certain types of processed sunflower and safflower oil, and of course, soybean oil. Now, there are certain brands that have higher quality sunflower oil. Like I have a salad dressing I love called Tessame's, and they use, by the way, if you're looking for a good salad dressing brand, buy Tessame's, that's the brand. They're the best, they're the most keto friendly. In fact, they have a keto friendly seal on a lot of their new bottles, so Tessame's is great. But again, most salad dressings are using 
hydrogenated oils, those you wanna stay away from. Look for oils like high quality sunflower oil and avocado oil and coconut oil as the oils in your salad dressing or olive oil is great in salad dressing. Okay, pork, here's the other thing. You wanna remove pork from your diet. Pork and all pig products are the highest carriers of parasites. Now listen, you can do beef bacon or turkey bacon. Those are great for you and great on a keto or a higher fat diet to balance hormones, but you've gotta stay away from pork. All pork products are toxic to your body. All right, so let's continue to go on here. So we talked about milk, sugar, refined grains, hydrogenated oils, pork. These are the things you wanna get out. You know what else you wanna get out of your diet? Is excess alcohol. Now, if you're gonna have alcohol drinking a little bit of what's called a dry farmed wine, that's okay, okay? Remember that, dry farm wine, a little bit of that if you're gonna drink is okay, but you gotta be careful, especially with beer, okay? Beer and then, you know, a lot of those sugary alcoholic drinks, uh, a lot of the, you know, high sugar white wines, those things will also really disrupt your hormones. And listen, you never wanna have more than two glasses of alcohol. Ideally, you don't wanna have more than one glass. Your body can tolerate one glass. But if you go over that, that's when it really, it overburdens your liver, causes inflammation. And so again, you wanna be really careful with alcohol consumption as well. All right, let's talk about female herbs and male herbs now and really the difference there. By the way, I wanna say thank you everybody who's sharing this video. Um, I love this. Uh, thanks everybody who's sharing this video. I uh, got, got a lot of comment, comments on pork right now. I think a lot of people were uh, surprised by the pork comment. But listen, for thousands of years, even in different religious um, texts, like the Bible, they talk about pork is toxic. It's still toxic today. Again, pork, here's the thing to remember, they carry parasites. And parasites will destroy your gut microbiome. So for that reason, you just want to stay away from pork, even organic pork. Now listen, if you want bacon, buy beef bacon. Sometimes it's hard to find. You can order it online though. Beef bacon and turkey bacon are awesome. In fact, I like beef bacon even more than pork bacon. And then turkey bacon, that's easy to find everywhere, but that's what I would do instead. All right, let's talk about herbs for men and women. By the way, do me a favor right now. Punch the share button, click the love button. Help me spread the word that food is medicine and we all need to be, uh, you know, practicing that. All right, let's talk about herbs for females. I got some herbs here, some you might be familiar with, and a few of these you may not have even heard of. Um, and by the way, if you want more of this information, all the stuff I'm talking about, don't forget, check out my new book, Keto Diet. I have a 30-day meal plan, all these recipes. It goes through this in depth, but lays out a complete program for you, $10 off right now on Amazon. All right, the herb Vitex, it's also known as Chasberry. This is one of the ultimate herbs for balancing your estrogen levels. Now, especially if you're a female that has painful, um, really painful menstrual cycles, this is an herb you wanna consider taking is Vitex, okay? Vitex is great for estrogen and progesterone balance. Um, Don Kwai. Now, this herb in Chinese medicine is known as female ginseng, okay? Female ginseng. And Don Kwai is actually typically known as a blood builder. So if you have blood loss during your menstrual cycle, you want to consume Don Kwai, okay? Don Kwai builds your iron back, builds your blood back, but it also has hormone balancing properties, may even support collagen in your body and your skin health. So Don Kwai is a Chinese herb that has tremendous health benefits, especially for your hormones and for your blood. Now, if you're a person with anemia, you absolutely want to take Don Kwai and herbs like peony, which help with building blood in your body. But Don Kwai is the absolute best. A lot of women should be taking it, especially the week leading up to and the week before you're having your, having your period on your menstrual cycle. So again, Don Kwai, you, and you can look it up. Just look up Dr. Axe Don Kwai. I've written an article on Don Kwai and how it works in the body. It's an amazing herb that's gonna keep growing in popularity now and in the future. All right, the next herb here is black cohosh. Now, Don Kwai is typically for women that are under the age of 50, okay? Black cohosh is for those women that are postmenopausal. Black cohosh really helps with hot flashes, helps with that type of, helps balancing estrogen, 
In fact, some women want to increase estrogen, especially over the age of 50. Black cohosh can help with that. So black cohosh is an herb I would consider if you're postmenopausal. Holy basil. Now, these last three herbs are for all women and men both, okay? All women and all men can benefit from these herbs. Holy basil, also known as tulsi. Now, this was an herb used in Ayurvedic medicine, and it is great used as an adaptogen. It's an adaptogenic herb that can lower stress hormones on the body. So this is a really good one for longevity and anti-aging. Ashwagandha, this is the number one herb for thyroid. If you have hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's thyroiditis, those two conditions, doing ashwagandha is the most beneficial hormone. Now, ashwagandha is good for everybody. It slows the aging process, lowers cortisol, helps balance your, 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 your nervous system. So ashwagandha is great. Um, and then the herb bacopa. You're gonna start hearing more and more about bacopa. It's an adaptogen that really supports your brain. So if you have hormone imbalance, but also you maybe wanna support your brain at the same time, bacopa is an herb that actually has some similar properties to ashwagandha, but also helps your brain, your memory, and a lot of other things. So again, Bacopa ashwagandha, some of the big ones there as well. Now, I wanna say this, if you have an issue like insulin issues like PCOS, I think holy basil and ashwagandha are two of the best along with Vitex um, there as well. And I get questions about, um, and by the way, with all those conditions I talked about, a keto diet is great. If you do have hypothyroidism specifically, what I would recommend is going what I call light keto. Follow the entire keto plan I have in this book for hormones, but then add in a little bit of rice, okay? Have a little bit of GABA rice. Go on Amazon and look up G-A-B-A, -A, GABA rice, and buy GABA rice, because the thyroid can benefit. Sometimes it wants a little more carbohydrates, so you can do rice to support it if you have hypothyroidism. So follow the same keto plan, but add a little bit of rice in, and that's how you'll follow it. And it's okay that you're not getting in a strong state of ketosis, just a mild state. All right, let's talk about herbs for men. Then I'm really excited to talk about CBD oil and essential oils in just a second. Before I do that, though, let's talk about male herbs. By the way, if you're enjoying this live broadcast right now, do me a favor, punch the share button, click the love button, help me spread the word that food is medicine. All the, also, by the way, I've got a bonus number seven I'll be covering in about five minutes once we get to that section here as well. By the way, I want to hear, are you guys excited about my new book? I'm super stoked, Keto Diet. I want to hear from you. If you've already bought the book, pre-ordered it, it's coming out in like five days, five or six days, it's coming out. So um, I would love to hear what you think uh, or if you're excited about getting my new book, Keto Diet. Remember right now, if you haven't ordered it yet, it's $10 off. Order it for a friend. You know a friend who needs help with their health? Get a couple of them because they're on sale right now on Amazon and there are bookstores by next week, they're in every bookstore across the country, including Barnes & Noble. Make sure to check it out, Keto Diet there. All right, male. Now, what's the difference between female and male hormones? Well, male and Chinese medicine have more testosterone, right? And women tend to have more estrogen. Now, there's some other differences too, but those are two things to remember. So a lot of the herbs I talked about here really help balance out those estrogen and progesterone balance. For men, it's important that we're balancing out, and by the way, insulin too. For men, we need to balance and support testosterone levels, human growth hormone, and also cortisol. That's big for men too, is keeping cortisol balanced. So the herbs here, number one for men, and by the way, if you have a male in your life, you might be a male watching this. I know on average I have more females watching, but let's say it's your husband or a boyfriend or someone you really love, and they just seem like, like they've lost their motivation they've lost some of their strength, some of their, you know, their, their vigor, then this is the, sup here are some herbs that you may wanna consider buying for them or getting for them, or if you're male, buy this for yourself. Number one is fenugreek. Now, fenugreek was the herb used in Ayurvedic medicine for supporting testosterone in men, or human growth hormone, giving you more strength, more vigor, um, it, in Chinese medicine, it's called building your yang, okay? It's like CrossFit, it's strength, it's all of that. It's your libido. But fenugreek, okay? Now, fenugreek also has major digestive benefits, but fenugreek is a great herb to use. Another herb that's great for men and women both 
is turmeric. Okay, we know that, right? Turmeric is very anti-inflammatory. Men tend to have more inflammation in their diet, so consuming turmeric is gonna be great for men and women, but men in this section we're talking about. But copa for men, especially if you're a man and you're wanting to increase your productivity at work or have better focus and, you know, and really think at a higher level. It's great for golfers, whatever, anything you're trying to do where you're trying to have a high level of focus, working out, Bacopa is a great herb to consume. It's also yang in nature, which is good for men. Ginseng. Now, if men are really looking to increase their stamina, their vigor, and especially a, a man in your life that seems like they've lost motivation, doing both fenugreek and ginseng together, that's a great combo for men to do. And it's a lot safer and better than I see a lot of men getting, you know, hormone replacement therapy, like doing, you know, testosterone injections. Listen, that stuff long-term is bad for you a lot of times. Now, there's a place for, actually, I see a question here about bioidentical hormones from Mary. You know, here's my opinion. I think you're better off going with this route, changing your diet, using herbs and lifestyle. I think that's superior to bioidentical hormones. I think it's healthier. I think it's safer. I think it's better. But if somebody exhausts and tries all these things and they're still having issues that are at detriment to their health, now listen, if you're 90 years old, it's not normal for you to have the testosterone levels of a 30 year old. You get what I'm saying? So there's a normal aging process. So don't try and be something you're not, okay? I know, and you wanna stay younger, you know how you do it in a healthy manner? With these Chinese herbs, Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, They've been studying and promoting anti-aging for over 3,000 years. Let's harness some of their wisdom. I, and again, I think there's a place for bioidentical hormones. If you exhaust these things, then go the bioidentical hormone route. But I found most of the time people don't need that if they do these things I'm talking about right here. I really hope that helps, guys. Okay, and I have another question about herbs for hair loss. Here's the thing about hair loss. It's all cortisol. It's all stress hormones. If you are having thinning hair and hair loss, you gotta bring cortisol down. The big thing is adaptogenic herbs. I would do ashwaga ashwagandha, I would do holy basil, and I would build peace into your life, peace and joy. Get rid of the things that are stressing you out, and I'd follow a diet, I would get rid of the sugar. There's another oil, I'm gonna talk about oils here in a second that are big for hair loss. I'll share with you, it's CBD oil, and I'm talking about more in a minute but I would do ashwagandha, holy basil, CBD oil, and build peace into your life and get rid of the sugar, carbs, more healthy fats. Those things will all help hair loss, and I would do collagen. I will supplement with a specifically multi-collagen protein. So you can Google search multi-collagen protein or Dr. Act, but that's what I would do uh, as part of a smoothie every single day for your hair. So for hair, collagen is really big, omega-3s help too, so you wanna get those as fats and then taking these adaptogenic herbs like ashwagandha I mentioned, and then probably some organic CBD oil. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on here. For men, ginseng. Now for men with digestive issues, by the way, this is big for men and women. If you have loose stools, inflammatory bowel disease, gut issues and immune system problems, like autoimmune disease with gut issues, the number one herb you can take is astragalus. Astragalus was used in Chinese medicine. In fact, it was one of the most five famed herbs in Chinese medicine, along with ginseng and Dong Kwai and a couple others. Um, but astragalus, an amazing herb used that can really help both your hormones, your immune system, and your gut health uh, there as well. So really big astragalus. I love for candida as well, long-term candida. It's great for that too. So these are the herbs for men. And again, there's a lot of overlap here. So definitely women can be taking astragalus and turmeric. Uh, you know, uh, men can be doing holy basil, ashwagandha, bacopa. But I wanted to talk specifically to really common both female and male conditions. But the biggest issue males, males have today is losing that testosterone, that free testosterone and growth hormone over time and having the high cortisol. Those are the two things that men have. These help solve it for women. It tends to be when they're younger, estrogen dominance, low progesterone, sometimes testosterone's off, high cortisol. Women have a little bit more complexity in their hormones, but um, these herbs will help. And if you don't know what to take, your just hormones are off as a woman, what I would do is I would probably do ashwagandha first. Ashwagandha, okay? All right, let's talk about oils 
that can help. By the way, if you're enjoying this live broadcast, hey, help me spread the word, punch the share button, click the love button, help me teach people that food is medicine and there are natural ways to, buy their, to balance hormones. You know there are, are women out there today getting injections of steroids and it's decreasing their bone density so then they have osteoporosis so then they have to take another medication. That's where medications lead us. It's typically side effect after side effect after side effect. Versus herbs help support your organs, bringing balance to the body so it's a more long-term solution, better for your health. And these act as antioxidants, they act as nutrients. They're a much, much better option. So we're gonna cover oils now, supplements, and I have number seven, the bonus here. Before I do that though, I had somebody send me some cool products. So if you are looking for some foods that are good for you, I wanted to share these. This is a brand called Super Fat, okay? I wanted to show this to you. Um, these are awesome. If you want healthy keto snacks, super fat. This has, and I think I love about this, it's got coconut, almond, macadamia nut butter, cacao, really, really healthy stuff. And it even says on the back how many fats. So 22 grams of fat, three carbs, and five grams of protein. Awesome for keto, so super fat. These are great when you're traveling. So this is the cacao one. This is the protein-rich one. And this is the uh, original. You can see in this protein-rich one, 21 grams of fat, four carbs, nine grams of protein. Awesome snacks here. Another snack, I thought these were great. This is um, Pilly, it's super food fuel, raw cacao with maca, I love that adaptogen there. You can see the fat there. This is another brand, and I think you can buy these at Whole Foods Market, Sprouts, maybe Vitamin Shop, um, but definitely at Whole Foods Market, Sprouts, Natural Grocers. You know, but go to your local health food store and ask for these healthy keto snacks. These are all great. Here's another one I love, Kalari Biltong. This is a, uh, like steak, it's grass, it's steak that's been dried. So really healthy, lots of healthy fats and protein there. So anyways, wanted to share, if you wanna know what I'm eating, those are some of the healthy snacks that I love eating there too. All right, let's talk about CBD oil. By the way, I'd love to hear from you if you've ever used CBD oil and seen results in your body post now. I'd love to see from you guys if you guys have seen anything, uh, any improvements there by, by using uh, CBD oil. Here's the thing. CBD oil is not a cure-all, but you know what? It is greatly beneficial for a lot of people. I'd put it in a category with something like turmeric. CBD oil, now they do different things, but CBD oil helps decrease stress hormones. Remember I said that earlier? One of the things that actually if you wanna get into ketosis faster and burn more fat, lower cortisol, lower stress hormones. Most of us have stress hormones up here all the time. It causes us to age faster, causes our insulin to be off, which causes us to store body fat. Bad stuff, okay? So again, we wanna lower stress hormones. The most effective thing to lower stress hormones from a, a food supplement standpoint is CBD oil. CBD oil is fantastic. And along with, by the way, I'm getting some comments here. Esther says, CBD oil helped me relax and heal my joints. Chris Beltron said, CBD is great for anxiety. Trish Farmer says, CBD, yes, over three years now, no more pain and off my meds. Bonita said, CBD is helping my stomach issues. Man, this is amazing. So a lot of people are touting the benefits of CBD oil. And um, so again, CBD oil, one of those great things for stress hormones you can do and great for anybody looking to balance their hormones because you know what? A lot of hormones get imbalanced because your stress hormones are too high. Here, here's the way it works. If you have one hormone that's off in your body like insulin or cortisol, it then throws off an estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, it throws off all these other hormones in your body. So you wanna keep those balanced. So CBD oil, here's some essential oils that can also help. Clary sage. Clary sage is fantastic for estrogen balance. Holy basil essential oil, we talked about earlier, great adaptogen essential oil. Evening primrose oil, you can take that oil internally for progesterone balance. And then omega-3 fats are good for insulin and reducing system-wide inflammation. So good for everybody's hormones, so really good there. So those are some of the oils you wanna be getting along with the oils we talked about earlier like omega-3 rich fish oils, um, you know, uh, MCT oil, olive oil, ghee, 
avocado oil. Those are the oils you wanna be getting. And then let's talk about supplements. I wanna talk about a few supplements you might consider. And by the way, if you are excited about all the things I've talked about, and if you have a hormone, any type of hormone imbalance that I've talked about, I just wrote a book on how to balance hormones naturally and heal your body using a combination of keto with Chinese medicine. I cover a lot of that in here. It's my new book, Keto Diet. Make sure this comes out, it's released in six days in every bookstore across the country. Also, it's on Amazon right now for $10 off and on Barnes & Noble, it's typically about $30. It's only 18 right now. Check it out. By the way, the recipes in this book, keto pancakes, keto fudge, keto chocolate chip cookies, using almond flour, coconut flour, 30-day plan, really easy recipes, so you can check it out there. And also check out, I'm doing a street team. If you want a lot of other keto-free bonuses, then Google search Dr. Axe Keto Street Team, or maybe we'll post a link there. You can check that out there too. So it's, it's right there in the book if you want to uh, want to see it. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about these other things we got to do here, okay? So balancing your hormones, here's another thing you need, vitamin D, okay? Vitamin D, vitamin D isn't just a, a vitamin, it's actually more of a pro-hormone. So you don't need this year round typically, but in the winter, in, in really late fall, so let's say typically November through March, most people should be supplementing with vitamin D, okay? It's important for your immune system, it's important for your bone health and integrity, and it's also important for your hormone balance. So 5,000 to 10,000 I use daily of vitamin D3, and that's what you wanna be looking for. And, and feel free to Google online Dr. Axe vitamin D. I've written about this in the past, and you can learn a lot more about vitamin D and the things I cover there. Here's another supplement you should be taking to balance hormones. Multi-collagen, okay? Multi-collagen, okay? Or multi-collagen protein. And then a keto protein powder, okay? Look for keto-friendly products, keto multivitamins, keto matcha. Matcha green tea is fantastic for hormones. So doing some of those products there as well. So again, but vitamin D is one of the big ones there as we're talking about supplements for hormonal health. I think one of the best there. And then for some women, especially if you have a thyroid condition, a B-complex vitamin D. So again, get that. If you have a, a thyroid condition, taking a vitamin B complex can also really help your hormones for thyroid hormones. Now, number seven thing here, okay, for hormone balance. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just write up here number, number seven, okay? See if I can write backwards there. All right, seven is gonna be your mindset, your lifestyle. So listen to this, in Chinese medicine, when you experience certain negative emotions, it causes hormone balance. If you have the emotion of fear, we know that causes adrenaline to go up and cortisol, that causes your stress hormones to go up. So if you're living in a mild state of fear, and listen, here's what happens. Most of us wake up in the morning thinking about all of the minor emergencies we have all day. Oh, I've gotta bring the kids to soccer practice. Oh, I've gotta pack them food. Oh, I've gotta run and get this work done. I gotta do errands. Oh, I volunteered for this, I gotta do that, right? By the way, raise your hand right now online if that's you. If you're like, okay, that's me, I overcommit, okay? Also raise your hand if you don't get any you time to take care of yourself. That's a lot of you guys right now. Or click the love button right now or the share button if you're like, this is me. I'm always I'm going all day, I'm doing too much. Listen, if you wanna balance your hormones, the emotion of fear, and you may not think of it as fear, you may think to yourself, no, I'm just, it's a little stress, it's light stress. The emotion of fear in Chinese medicine is known, if you have fear, this is clinically studied, it actually causes disease or dysfunction in your adrenal glands, your bladder, and your reproductive organs. If you live in this constant state of fear, and we don't think of it as that, but are you fearful like, I might not get there on time? Oh, I've gotta do this, I might not get everything done today. A lot of us live in this mild state of fear all day and it builds up, keeps stress hormones high, causes disease in our body, okay? Or worry, worry causes disease of your digestive system, okay? This mild state of I'm worrying, I'm not gonna quite get this done, I might disappoint others, I might, causes disease in your organs, okay? So the way that we combat that is through a state of joy typically. So of all the emotions that are the most healing, joy is probably the most healing emotion you can experience and so, you know, think about what are you joyful? What do you love to do? You need to schedule joy and peace in your week. When you're peaceful and content and when you're joyful. 
Those are the emotions that are the most healing for everybody. Actually, even there's a, there's a, a couple of Bible verses that talk about joy, like in his presence and those sort of things. But all that being said, joy, right? Joy is one of the most healing emotions you can experience. So what do you do? Well, you look at your schedule and you schedule some you time and some time for, for joy. You schedule those things. It's lunch with a best friend. It's walking in nature. It's listening to a, you know, to a, to a really positive song or a praise song, you know, and singing with it. It's doing things. It's, it's laughing. It's, it's those things. Did you guys know that's, that, that's big for your hormonal health. It's huge. In fact, I will tell you right now, I'm taking care of thousands of patients over the years that what will affect their body just as much as diet and what they eat is the emotions that they're experiencing. So it is a really, really big deal, the emotions you're experiencing on a daily basis to keep your hormones balanced. So again, strive to be joyful and grateful and content. And listen, you can't control the weather. If you're late to a meeting, what's the worst that happens if you're five minutes late, okay? Typically nothing. So think about that next time you're in that situation, but that is also key for hormone balance there as well. So I wanna mention this before I wrap up. Um, and by the way, I'm getting so much affirmations here. Marie Trammell, thanks so much. Terry Heiders is so true. Thanks, guys. Um, so I want to mention this. I'm so excited. I, I want to just ask and let you know I'm grateful for your support. So I'm releasing this book. It comes out in six days. I'm actually going on the 700 Club tomorrow to talk about it. Next week, I'm crossing my fingers. I might be going on The View. And uh, anyway, it's got a lot of different uh, shows I'm going to be doing talking about the book. But the book is Keto Diet. has a 30-day plan to balance your hormones, boost your brain health, help you lose weight unwanted weight, even if it's just the last five pounds, this can help you do it. And I have 80 plus recipes in here, but they're simple recipes. Keto fudge, uh, you know, wild teriyaki salmon, um, a keto collagen boosting smoothie, uh, keto muffins, all types of stuff. You can get this book. It's $10 off on Amazon right now. And, um, and it's going to be in bookstores nationwide next week, but get it right now. Barnesandnoble.com, Amazon.com. Check it out. Keto diet. And uh, so grateful for all you guys checking out the book and buying it and really supporting uh, us and what I do here on Facebook Live and everything else. So again, hey, remember these tips that we talked about and going keto. Remember, in your meals, here's what you should have. Healthy fats, fiber, and collagen or protein of some sort, every meal. Get rid of the conventional milk, the sugar, the, the, the refined grains, the hydrogenated oils, the pork, and the high sugar alcohol content. Remember the herbs for women, herbs for men. Consider just, you don't have to take all of them, just take one or, or take a couple on a regular basis. Remember these oils, CBD oil we talked about, clary sage, great for women, fenugreek oil, great for men. Um, and then we talked about supplements, especially vitamin D and a multi-collagen protein and keto protein. And then of course, reducing that stress, building joy in your life. All those are key to balancing your hormones naturally. Listen, these things work better than any drugs, synthetic medication out there. These are the way to have healthy, balanced hormones without the side effects long-term. And I wanna say, hey, thanks everybody who's on mission with me, who's sharing this. Thanks for everybody who's buying the book now. We'll be emailing, or we'll be mailing you the book if you buy it online next week already. And uh, I'll be back with another Facebook Live next week. Thanks for watching, guys.